Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us one more time. Don't forget to subscribe. We have a Vietnamese guitar here that a customer had ordered. And there are some issues that are pretty difficult to overcome. So let's cover the issues sort of one by one. You, as you can see, the, uh, there's a pretty spectacular inlay. And of course the Vietnamese are famous for inlay work. But no matter how beautiful the guitar looks, there are some fundamental things that need to be addressed and on this guitar it's kind of debatable on how far we can go. So first of all, I put that straight edge on there, I go up to the bridge and this neck is set too far back this way. So even with this saddle which is loose in there and it's amazing that the front lip of that bridge hasn't cracked right off, when I place that straight edge on there it's supposed to kiss the bridge. In all fairness, this bridge is much, has been thinned down much too. It could be almost twice that thickness, but the straight edge still wouldn't touch it. So to further complicate things, there is enough real estate in the thickness of this fingerboard to correct the neck angle without actually removing the neck. But the problem there is, all this beautiful inlay, it's going to disappear. Now if that was the only issue, it might be worth considering. But let's take a look inside because there's a much more serious issue. The bridge plate is so far forward that the six bridge pinholes have missed the bridge plate completely. And on top of that, the bridge plate is spruce. It should be some type of hardwood. That piece in the center goes right in between the third and the fourth strings and he's already lost one bridge pin. Oh, well, Chris is a bit of a collector. He's got uh, quite a selection of guitars. I did talk to him over the weekend and just told him I'm, I'm going to do a little video that you can really see what we're faced with. And of course, anything can be done, but you get to a point where you got to go, really? I mean, this shouldn't have to be done at all. You know, he bought this guitar in good faith, and I don't know what's going to happen. If I would think the guy would just give him a replacement guitar. If not, well, unfortunately, this will just turn out to be a bit of a wall hanger. And as I mentioned earlier, this saddle is so loose in there it's not just that it won't transfer the resonance properly but with the action as high as it needs to be the front of that bridge is going to crack guaranteed at some point so what we end up with is an absolutely gorgeous beautifully inlaid wall hanger that's essentially unplayable I wanted to share that with you, and I'm not even giving you the name of this maker because I don't know what the story was here. I look at how much work he put into this guitar. I mean, look at the binding and the inlay. I mean, it's phenomenal. So this one I will do nothing to. This is kind of an advocation video for Chris so that he can approach the builder and, and try and make amends um, to send this back to Vietnam. The guy would have to do exactly what I would do, which is pull all the frets change the trajectory of the string path to the bridge and if I had my druthers I would make a new bridge twice that thickness put another bridge plate in so you get the idea here the list goes on and on it's not gonna happen and that kinda wraps it up for this one unfortunately like I said it's an absolutely gorgeous guitar but being beautiful and being playable and being in tune are all completely different things obviously there's a a mountain of work that went into this guitar, but it doesn't do you much good if some of the most critical elements are completely absent. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.